week we'll be discussing faith. Faith without works is dead. If faith does not move us to take a positive action to agree with what God has shown us, then that faith is dead. And, I want, and that's the main thrust of my message today, so I'll, I'm going to repeat it and, and go even a little slower so that you can, it can sink in what I just said. If faith does not move us to take a positive action to agree with what God has shown us, then that faith is dead. So we don't have the um, we don't have the PowerPoint. So if you want to get a Bible, there's Bibles on the back table, and I'll give you a second if anybody wants. Jim Jim will pass them out. And if you have a Bible, turn to James chapter two, and we're going to start at verse fourteen. Does anybody want a Bible? Just raise your hand, and and and, and Jim will give you a Bible. Thank you, Jim. James chapter two. And we're going to start at verse 14. <clears throat> and the Bible says, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or a sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to him, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. So let's look at this example that James gives us. And he says that if there's a brother or a sister that's in need, and in this example, the need is he has food, he needs food, or she needs food, or they, they need clothing. The idea is not to just say pleasant trees to them. It's not just to pray. Praying is good. You can pray with them, but let's not just stop there, James is saying. He's saying help them with their need. And, and you may say, well, I don't have a lot, but if everybody gives a little, to support that person, then he would have all he would need. The idea is to, to um, if, if someone comes in and they're in need of food, you give them food. You know, you don't just say, well, brother, I hope you get a meal sooner or later. See you next week. You try to do something to give them, to support them. And as I'm studying the book of James and I'm looking through the book of James, I notice that James, he, he's, he sees as God sees. He sees with the eyes of love. He sees his brother or sister and he says, we just can't just pray for him. We got to do something. And, and if, 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 you just, if you just say something, or you just pray for him, that's sort of like religious. That's what when, 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 when religion sees something, they pray at. And there's nothing wrong with praying. I'm not downplaying praying. I'm saying we should pray, but on top of prayer, we should do more than just pray. We should do something because that's Christ-like. When Christ saw him a need, when he was on the earth, he met it. He prayed for them, but he met the need also. And not only does that build up their faith, it builds up our faith too. It builds up our faith because when we give and we help someone else, we know that in our time of need, God's going to talk to someone else to help us when we have a need. And it also builds up their faith because they said, God met my need. So when I see someone with a need and I have, I can give to them. So it, it, it builds up your faith and it builds up their faith also. So we move on into verse 18. 
And it says, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works. And I'll show you my faith by my works. Verse 19 says, you believe that there's one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. And what verse 18 was saying is that if you don't do works, you can't show your faith. I can't take faith out and put it in my hand and say, this is my faith right here. Here it is, you see? You can't do that. The only way you can show your faith is by the works you do. You see a need, you meet it. If you don't meet that need, if you don't have the works, it's sort of like telling God that you don't believe in what He's telling you. You're showing in effect that you're not believing what God has given you to believe. See, because works are the legs that make faith run. Works are the legs that make faith run. Faith can't move unless it has legs to it. And the legs that make the faith run is the works that you do. And when I, I read verse 19, I'm going to read it again, that you believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. <coughs> That's a sobering thought. Because it takes more than just believing in God. Because the the, the demons believe in God, and that ain't helping them in. <laughs> Believing in God is a good thing, but trusting in Him is important as well. Amen. And the way we trust Him is faith with works. Because faith without works is dead, being by itself, James says. So James gives us a couple of examples, and we're going to look at these examples. He gives two people that he talks about. He talks about Abraham, and he talks about um, Rahab. And that's in uh, James chapter 2, and we're going to start at verse 20. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works? when he offered Isaac his son on the altar. Do you see that faith was working together with his works, and by works, faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see that a man is justified by works, and not by faith only. And Abraham is known as the father of faith, and that moniker is given to him for a reason. Abraham was going to offer his son as a sacrifice before God, and God commanded him to offer Isaac as, as, as a sacrifice. And this, this line, um, Abraham believed God, and it was counted him for him for righteousness. We're going to look at that, where it came from. It came from the book of Genesis, chapter 15. And I'm going to start in verse 2. I'll give you a little background. Abraham was called Abram at this time. And he still, Isaac was not born yet. Isaac wasn't even known to, to uh, Abraham yet. And Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go childless and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? Back in that time, if you didn't have a, a son to give your, your, your worldly possessions to, it would go to the servant who was with you the longest. He would inherit all of, all of your, all of your um, worldly possessions when you when you die. So he said, my heir is El Eliezer of Damascus. Then Abram said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. 
Verse 4, And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now toward heaven, count the stars if you're able to number them. And he said, So shall your de descendants be. And he believed in the Lord, here's the, that verse, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. So back then, that's where faith was. God said, you're going to have a son, and through this son, there's going to be a multitude of descendants that if you can count the stars in the sky, then you would be able to, to count your descendants. And that's the Abraham believed God, and it was, re and it was reckoned to him, counted to him for righteousness. The work that he had to do was killing the same promise that God gave him. God told him to take this child, bring him to a mountain that he would show him, which was Mount Horeb, and sacrifice him there as a sacrifice to God. The very same child that was given to him as, as um, his descendant, he was he had the sacrifice and um, I want to show you something in Hebrews chapter 11 because it talks about this it talks about Abraham and, 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 and Isaac and in verse 17 of chapter 11 of Hebrews it says by faith Abraham when he was tested offered up Isaac and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac your seed shall be called, concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. So Abraham believed, I'm going to take my son, I'm going to go to this mountain, I'm going to sacrifice him to God, and God's going to raise him from the dead. That's basically what he believed. Because God said, In Isaac, your seed will be called in Isaac. So if Isaac is dead, how can, how can Isaac have any children if he's dead? He believed that God was going to raise him from the dead. And the work of faith, which was him taking Isaac to that mountain, that work of faith, it, when you have a work of faith, it's your agreement of what God said to you. When you do something to make what God showed you come to pass, you're agreeing with God, saying, yes, amen. You amen God to what He had called you to do in your life. Even if you're just minding your own business and God says, I want you to give I remember I walked into a bathroom once at Walmart, and there was a guy in the bathroom, and God said, give him $20. Never saw him before in my life, this guy. Never saw him. He was like washing his hands and doing some stuff, and I walked over to him, and I said, excuse me, sir. God just told me to give you $20. Jesus loves you. I gave him $20. He said, well, you know, I, don't, I really don't need it. It's okay. And I said, you may not need it. But today you may meet someone who may need it. And you can give them that $20 that I just gave you. And he started crying. He gave me a hug. And, and, and it was because I listened to what God said. Faith told me, give him $20. I gave him $20. And God blessed him. He may have needed it. He may have just been too proud to take it. But when I came back and said, well, just give it to someone who's in need, he was able, he was able to take it. So that's, that's what we're talking about. The work, the work of faith is your agreement to what God said. So when you agree with God, good things happen. 
And when you work to fulfill what God has told you, this is you agreeing and saying amen to what God said. Now we're going to look at Rahab. Some people will know that, that Rahab was a harlot. And she was um, living, actually living in the wall of Jericho. If you, if, if you know about the wall of Jericho, it was so thick, that wall, that chariots were able to race on top of it. That's how thick this wall was. So there were houses in the wall. She, would, she lived in the wall. And in verse 25, we're going back to James chapter 2. Likewise was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way. So there's two, there's two um, spies that, that Joshua sent out and they went into Jericho and um, this, this, this harlot Rahab hid them from, from uh, the king and, and the people of the town because they knew they were there so she hid them and told them, well, they left already, and and she kept them safe, so they they were they were able to to be kept alive. And we see in Hebrews 11, it talks about Rahab also. And in verse 30 of Hebrews 11 says, by faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. And by faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. The work was she hid the spies, believing that she would be saved, that these people would spare her life. But not only did they spare her life, they spared her whole family life, as long as they were in her house with her when Israel mounted their attack. Because if you remember, the walls fell down, the walls of Jericho fell down, but the only thing that remained standing was where she was with her family. And they stayed in the, they were able to, to um, be saved. So Rahab the harlot stayed with Israel, and she became a part of Israel, and she was in the genealogy of Jesus. That shows you, that shows you redemption, that God redeemed her. And it ends in verse 26, it says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So we see that works without faith, if you have works without faith, it's not justified. But faith without works is not justified either. It's when faith and works join together. That's when they justify. And it's when we believe God that we walk out the plan that He has for us. Amen? Amen. So God bless you guys. Have a happy Father's Day.